Hello everyone and welcome to K-State's Journey to the Cotton Bowl. I'm Alex Weevil alongside Rob Hughes. What a season for the Wildcats. They won 10 games for the first time since 2003 and get to play in a bowl game after New Year's Day. That's right, Alex. Bill Snyder guides the Wildcats into their 15th bowl appearance in school history. And it doesn't get much better than a top 10 matchup against the Arkansas Razorbacks. Yes, indeed, Rob. Over the next half hour, we'll lead you up to kickoff from Cowboy Stadium in Arlington, Texas. But let's whet the appetite a little bit and recap how the Wildcats made this journey to the Cotton Bowl. September 3rd, kickoff weekend in college football. The Wildcats playing host to Eastern Kentucky. K-State defensive back Nigel Malone bursts onto the scene. He records two interceptions and begins a stellar year on his way to all Big 12 honors. It remained tight into the fourth quarter as K-State didn't put any points on the scoreboard. However, the Cats remained calm. Colin Klein's magical year begins. He connects with Chris Harper for the game-winning touchdown in the final two minutes, giving Coach Snyder his 150th career victory. Cats rally 10-7. <laughs> After a week off, the Cats returned home to meet Kent State, this game not nearly as close as the first one. The Wildcats jump ahead with the services of David Garrett. He provides K-State's first pick six since 2008. That killed them in a blowout victory. K-State pitched its only shutout of the season, a 37-0 defeat over Kent State. Colin Klein accounted for three Wildcat touchdowns. Maybe the biggest statement of the season, K-State's goal line stand against the Miami Hurricanes. The Wildcats led 28-24 with under a minute to go. The Canes forced to go for it on fourth and goal. Trey Walker comes up huge for the Wildcats, denying quarterback Ja'Cory Harris from the end zone. An impressive stop allows the Cats to escape South Beach and keep the record unblemished at 3-0. October 1st, the Big 12 season begins as the Wildcats meet eventual Heisman Trophy winner Robert Griffin III, but he was outdueled by Colin Klein. The Wildcats signal caller threw two touchdowns and ran for another as K-State led by one point in the final minutes. Then the defense stepped up once again. No late game magic for RG3. K-State escapes a shootout 36-35. Once again, K-State gets a showcase in front of a national TV audience. The Wildcats face the Missouri Tigers at home. Colin Klein pounds across the goal line three different times to give the Wildcats a healthy lead. However, Missouri did not go away as the Tigers scored twice in the final minutes, but the Wildcat defense flexed its muscle down the stretch. The win vaulted K-State to a 5-0 start for the first time since 2000 and sending Mizzou home with a loss and possibly the last meeting between these schools in quite some time as Missouri leaves for the SEC. October 15th, freshman Tyler Lockett made a name for himself. He returned a kickoff for a touchdown at Texas Tech. He's the son of Kevin Lockett and the nephew of Aaron, both of them all-time great for K-State. Tyson Hartman, one of the leaders on the defense, had an interception. Colin Klein did the rest as the Wildcats left Lubbock victorious, 41-34, marking a 6-0 start to the 2011 campaign and the first win at Texas Tech since 1997. October 22nd, Bill Snyder and the Wildcats venture over to Lawrence. It was the first time in five weeks that the Cats weren't picked as the underdog. K-State dismantled the Jayhawks in every aspect. Colin Klein tallied five total touchdowns as the Sunflower Showdown goes in favor of K-State by a wide margin, 59-21. The Cats advanced to a 7-0 record, matching the third best start in Wildcat history. Plus, it vaulted K-State into the nation's top 10. What promised to become a matchup of the season was a one-sided affair when Oklahoma traveled to Manhattan. The Sooners were upset the week before against Texas Tech, and they took out their frustrations on the Wildcats. K-State received two rushing scores from Colin Klein to give the Wildcats a brief lead. But OU reeled off 44 unanswered points and coasted to a 58-17 win at Bill Snyder Family Stadium. The loss spoiled K-State's bid for perfection. The following week, K-State met under the lights in Stillwater, Oklahoma for a matchup with the Oklahoma State Cowboys. The third-ranked team in the land jumped out quickly to a 14-0 advantage. All-American wide receiver Justin Blackman racked up more than 200 yards and two touchdowns. However, the Wildcats did not panic. Angelo Pease only had two scores all season long, but one of them sparks a rally. Then Alan Chapman gave the Cats a huge lift. He intercepts Brandon Whedon and returns it all the way back for a 60-yard touchdown return. K-State led by 10 at that point. Both teams traded heavy blows as if it were a prize title fight. 
Colin Klein tied the score at 45 with this 12-yard touchdown run with just over three minutes to play. Then Wichita native Joseph Randall gave the Cowboys a lead right back, a 23-yard touchdown scamper, and a 52-45 Cowboys. K-State gets an opportunity to answer with two minutes left. Klein marches the Wildcats down the field. He already converted on fourth down. And then this completion to Chris Harper extends the drive and put the Wildcats in prime position to tie the ball game or take the lead with a two-point conversion. With no time to run the ball, the Wildcats were forced to take shots at the end zone. Klein misfired on three passes in a row as time expired. K-State fell short while the nation watched. The Cats dropped to seven and two and allow more than 50 points in back-to-back -back weeks. History is made on November 12th. The Wildcats tangle with Texas A&M for the final time before the Aggies leave for the SEC. K-State dealt with pressure all season long. This night, not any different. The Cats trail by 10 with six minutes remaining. Colin Klein finds Chris Harper for a 53-yard touchdown strike, and kicker Anthony Cantelli later tied the game with a 44-yard field goal. That sends it to overtime, tied 31 apiece. Extra session number three, Klein broke away from the Aggie defense, a 25-yard touchdown run, making the score 47-41, and the first lead all game for K-State. But the two-point conversion failed. The drama hit another high point as Texas A&M responded right back. Ryan Tannehill completed to Uzoma Wachaku. That ties it back up at 47. The Aggies, however, do not convert the two-point conversion either. Texas A&M connected on a field goal to begin the fourth overtime. That's when Klein seals the deal. He caps it off with a quarterback sneak to win the game for the Wildcats. Simply incredible ball game, and what a way to bounce back from consecutive losses. The Wildcats escape 53-50. to After that marathon victory over Texas A&M, the Wildcats took their show to Austin for a meeting with the Longhorns. K-State did not move the ball with much success. However, key plays on defense set up the Cats in perfect position. Junction City native Ty Zimmerman intercepted Texas quarterback David Ash. Colin Klein found wide receiver Chris Harper to give the Cats a halftime lead, and later Klein scored a rushing touchdown as the Wildcats earned their fourth straight win against the Longhorns. K-State capped off a Texas sweep in the Big 12. The Cats beat Baylor, Texas Tech, Texas A&M, and Texas. Teams to remember shine in December. The season finale for K-State as it's senior day in Manhattan. The Wildcats send away 22 seniors prior to the matchup with the Iowa State Cyclones. Colin Klein set the K-State record for rushing yards by a quarterback and most rushing touchdowns as well. But the Cats still had to fend off the pesky Cyclones. Iowa State led after the first quarter and were thinking of another upset bid. However, Klein engineered another Wildcat triumph then running back John Hubert finished off the game with a powerful touchdown in the final three minutes. He only had three scores on the year, but this one vaults the Wildcats for their first 10-win season in eight years. Wildcats defeat Iowa State 30-23. to Win or lose tonight, the Wildcats surpass a lot of expectations. No doubt the stage is set for possibly another statement from K-State. Coming up next, we'll look at how Arkansas made its way to Arlington, so stick around. Hello, we already saw how K-State finished with a 10-2 record. Now we'll look at the opponent, the Arkansas Razorbacks. Alex, they also have a 10-2 mark and competed against some of the best teams in the country. The only two teams they've lost to are facing off against each other in the national title game. The Razorbacks are led on offense by quarterback Tyler Wilson, who led the SEC with over 3,400 passing yards while throwing 22 touchdowns to only six interceptions. And his favorite target, Jarius Wright, who led the conference with 11 receiving touchdowns and was second with 63 catches and over 1,000 yards receiving. The dynamic connection is a threat to score from anywhere on the field. Although the Razorbacks have a lot to be confident about, head coach Bobby Petrino gives a lot of respect to the Wildcats. 
I'd first like to uh, congratulate Coach Snyder and, and Kansas State on a tremendous season. It's fun to, to put the video on when we're studying them and watch a, a real well-coached football team and one that competes extremely hard and finds ways to win games. I've always felt that bowl games were about finishing the season for your seniors and starting the season off for, for your underclassmen. Arkansas certainly has the attention of Colin Klein. Now, the Sporting News named Bill Snyder National Coach of the Year, and maybe Snyder deserved more recognition across the country. The Wildcats didn't have many expectations entering the season. In fact, K-State was picked to finish 8th in the Big 12. Right now, the Cats are 8th in the BCS standings. Coach Snyder deserves most of the credit as the Hall of Fame coach wraps up his 20th season in Manhattan. Does that signify six figures? That's what I <laughs> Bill Snyder took over a K-State program that was on the brink of extinction. The Wildcats had a 30-game winless streak and were one of the worst teams in football. It's a tremendous challenge here, and I think this has the, the opportunity for the greatest turnaround in college football exists here today, and it's, not, and it's not one to be taken lightly. I certainly will not do that. Snyder's Wildcats picked up only one victory during his first season. K-State beat North Texas on a last-minute touchdown. Even though we were a 1-10 football team, I was quite confident, and more confident at that time than at any time before, that the program would have some success. You know, it's different, but I, I feel the same way. It didn't take long for Snyder and the Wildcats to turn the corner. In his fourth season, K-State won the 1993 Copper Bowl, the first postseason win in school history. That was just the beginning. Snyder reeled off 11 straight bowl appearances and winning at least nine games in all but one season. Snyder vaulted the Cats to number one in the polls when they beat Nebraska in 1998. <laughs> then in 2003, the Wildcats defied the critics, beating top-ranked Oklahoma at the Big 12 championship. K-State hit a rough patch the following two seasons as Snyder's ball club missed out on bowl bids and it forced him to take a break from coaching. After a three-year hiatus from 2006 to 2008, Snyder returned to the sidelines. The Kansas State family is in flux right now. And, and I want to be able to, to help. I want to be able to smooth the waters. Snyder certainly calmed the Wildcat fan base. He's beaten rival Kansas all three years and returns to a bowl game for the second year in a row. He's produced nearly 50 All-Americans and countless NFL prospects during his 20-year tenure. Yes, it is the greatest turnaround in college football history, but now there's a standard in Manhattan and Bill Snyder's name is written all over it. Quite a remarkable story. We'll be right back after this. But first, here's another K-State Bowl trivia question. Welcome back in our coverage of K-State's Journey to the Cotton Bowl special. Last season, the Wildcats ended the year in the inaugural Pinstripe Bowl against Syracuse. As Kansas First News sports reporter Rob Hughes tells us, that game had a lasting memory. Thanks, Alex, for returning players and fans. This year's Cotton Bowl is a chance to get the bad taste out of their mouths from last year's bowl season. A 36-34 loss, the Pinstripe Bowl was a great game marred by a questionable, at best, call at the end of a close game. We take a look back at the game many thought was taken from the Kansas State Wildcats. For a second straight year, Kansas State is in the postseason. The Wildcats' bid to the Pinstripe Bowl last year against Syracuse was their first appearance in the bowl season since 2006. After a dead even first half at Yankee Stadium in New York, the score was 14 to 14, setting up a down to the wire game to be decided by the players. Unfortunately, though, that would not be the case after Kansas State's Adrian Hilburn slipped a tackle for a 30-yard touchdown reception with a minute 13 remaining, it was just a two-point game. The referees took exception to a simple gesture Hilburn made to the crowd in celebration. It was a salute. 
and as a result, K-State was hit with a 15-yard excessive celebration penalty to be enforced on the two-point conversion attempt. Of course, they didn't convert from the 17-yard line. They were unable to recover the onside kick, and as a result, Syracuse won the game 36-34. to Needless to say, the Wildcats don't foster good memories from their last bowl experience. Coach Bill Snyder said he's preached to this team the importance of winning the last game of the season. Uh, I think just the idea that, uh, you know, you're going to be remembered by how that last ball game comes out. you got a long time between that one and the next one for guys that are returning. Uh, they want to go, you know, seniors want to go out on a, on a very positive note. The Wildcats have become accustomed to winning close games this season, so perhaps they'll avenge last year's bowl loss with a walk-off win like they did so many times this season. Thanks, Rob. Certainly a painful memory for a lot of Wildcat fans, but stick around. After the break, we'll lighten things up and have our keys to the game, plus our predictions. You don't want to miss it. Stay with us. Hello, it's time for our final segment of the show. Rob, let's hear your keys to victory for K-State. Alex, the Wildcats proved a lot of people wrong this year, and for them to do that one more time, Colin Klein is the man to do it. However, on defense, it's about getting pressure on Arkansas quarterback Tyler Wilson. He's the most proficient quarterback in the most dominant conference in the nation. It'll also be about their ball control offense. They need to win time of possession to keep Arkansas's offense off the field. K-State has averaged 50 less yards of total offense per game than their opponents on the season, but they have still been able to go 10 and two. That's a testament to their ball control offense. Finally, contain Jarius Wright in the red zone. He's got 11 touchdowns on the season and is always a threat to score for the Razorbacks. Yeah, Rob, that's right. Arkansas lost just twice all season long. That was against LSU and Alabama. Those teams will meet next week for the BCS National Championship. So it's no fluke that the Razorbacks are here. First off, the Hogs need to contain Colin Klein. You can't let him control the game or else he'll run right over you. As always, staying aggressive on third downs. If you keep K-State from having short distances on third or fourth and short, Arkansas will be in great shape. Offensively, Arkansas has a skill set and personnel to exploit K-State's secondary. The Wildcats gave up more than 260 yards through the air this year, which ranked 103rd in the country. So that must be a point of emphasis for Bobby Petrino's squad. This game will definitely be decided on which team can impose their will on the other team. That's exactly right, Rob. If KSA can run the ball, control the clock, like they've done all season long, the Wildcats have the upper hand. Meanwhile, Arkansas, they like to throw, and the Razorbacks can come out with the win if they do that to their advantage. That'll do it for us from the studio. Kickoff is just a short time away from all of us at Kansas First News. Thanks for watching and enjoy the game.